Chapter 9, Lesson 6, Essential Question. How can you use the strategy, solve a simpler problem, to help you solve a problem with patterns? Unlock the problem. On an arch archaeological dig, Gabriel separates his dig site into sections with areas of 15 square feet each. There are three archaeological members digging in every section. What is the area of the dig site if 21 members are digging at one time? So, And then they drew a picture right here to kind of give you an idea that this rectangle is worth 15 feet. So underline what you're being asked to find and circle the important information. All right, you should have underlined what is the area of the dig site if 21 members are digging, circled 15 square feet, and three archaeological members, because we need to have those labels so that we know what those numbers represent. And then I also, I kind of double underline the 21 because that is needed information to actually solve the problem. So now that we've done that, let's fill in our sentences based on what we've underlined and circled. So the first box is what do you need to find? You can fill that in based on what you underlined. What information do you need to use? You should be able to fill that in based on the information that you circled. So press pause and fill those two blocks or boxes in. For the first box, you should have said something to the effect of you need to find the area of the dig site if 21 people are digging. And then the information that we circled. I can use the area of each section, which is 15 square feet, that there are three members in each section, and then 21 members are actually digging. So how are we going to use this information? This is our plan. So um, I will use the information to search for patterns to solve a blank problem. In our essential question, what strategy were we going to use? We're going to solve a simpler problem. That's the strategy that we're going to practice today. So now let's look at the actual solve the problem. They've created a table with information here. And they have number of sections that we're working on. And they have the number of members, which we know the rule is add three because it's three for every section, okay? And then the area is 15. We know that each area is 15, so it's add 15. So now we're gonna have to look. Some possible rules. The multiply the number of sections to by what? So they're saying look at the number of sections and multiply it by something to get the number of members. So what would you multiply the number of sections by to get the number of members? Well, I'm looking one times something gets me three, three, two times three gets me six. So you're going to multiply that by three. You can write it there as well. Now that's important, but it doesn't get us the area answer. So there's one more step. We would still need to find a rule from the number of members to the size of the area. To do that, we need to multiply the number of members by something to find the total area. Okay, so now we're looking from the number of members to the area. I always automatically go to the smaller digits or to the smaller numbers because those are easier to manipulate in my head. Then once I figure out the rule, I can move to larger numbers. So what do I need to multiply our number of members by to get the area? I have 3 to 15. Well, I know that 3 times 5 equals 15, so let's check that out. 3 times 5 is 15. 6 times 5 equals 30. 9 times 5 is 45. This looks like it's working. 12 times 5 is 60. That is true. So we need to just multiply the number of members times 5 to get our answer. So press pause and fill in our missing term for the area. 
you should have ended up with 105. And if you need to do work like this, that's okay. You want to make sure you get the right answer. So you don't have to do everything in your head. So the area of the dig site, if 21 members are digging, is at what size? It is 105 square feet. Just to get you thinking, if the total area had been 135 in this math talk area, how could you have used division to find the number of members? You just have to look at the numbers this way. So 15 to 3. What do you do there? You would divide by 5. So you just do the opposite of here. So you, down here, for division, you would end up dividing by 5. Time to try another problem. Casey is making a design with triangles and beads for a costume. In his design, each pattern unit adds three triangles and 18 beads. If Casey uses 72 triangles in his design, how many times does he repeat the pattern unit? How many beads does Casey use? So underline what you're being asked to find and circle the important information. This one has two things that you're being asked to find. There's two question marks. So what do you need to find? You need to find two things. Make sure you write those down. And then what information do you need to use? You should have circled um, how many triangles, how many beads, um, and then what's the total number that you're going to be trying to get to to find missing pieces. Fill out these two boxes. So what you should need to find is how many times the pattern repeats and number two, how many beads are used. And this is based off of 72 triangles. So I, we should probably add that. And then what information do you need? Well, you need to know that one unit has three triangles and 18 beads. And then how are you gonna use this information? Well, our... Um, strategy for today is to solve a simple, simpler problem. So we're going to be looking at the patterns with the smaller numbers so that we can find the relationship or how they're related. When working with patterns, the best way is to organize your information. If you are not organized, it's going to be a little bit harder to find relationships. So I'm going to draw a quick table and I'm going to do three rows, okay, because we want to make sure that we organize all of our information. So this first one is going to be the pattern. So there's one unit, two, three, four, that's probably good. This next one is going to be the triangle, so I'll use a T. And we know that in one pattern, there are three triangles. And then the last one will be beads. And we know that in one, there's 18. So for the first three, um, do your counting on to start locating a pattern. Okay, so I only filled in through the first three because I think that'll be enough that I can get an idea of the relationship and the patterns. So we're looking first for how the pattern unit is related to the um, number of triangles. So we're looking from 1 to 3. What am I doing to this 1 to get to my 3? And I'm going to draw an arrow right down here on this side so that I know that's the relationship I'm looking at. So 1 to 3. Well, 1 times 3 is 3. Does that work for the other ones? 2 times 3 equals 6. Oh, that works. And 3 times 3, that equals 9. I think we just found that. So the number of pattern units is related to the number of triangles by multiplying by 3. Now let's look at the relationship between the number of triangles to the number of beads. What am I doing to the number of, of triangles to, the number, to get the number of beads? Well, 3 times 5 is 15, so that's not 18. But 3 times 6 is 18, um, 6 times 6 is 36, and six ti 9 times 6 is 54. So that is consistent. So I'm going to draw an arrow down here 
So we're multiplying times 6, the triangles times 6, to get the number of beads. Now, we've found our relationship, so now we need to actually answer our questions. So how many times will the pattern repeat if there are 72 triangles? So we need to actually look at it going this way, the opposite way. Well, it's pretty easy, actually. If we know that coming down we're multiplying by 3, how do we undo multiplication? We just divide by it, right? So the number of triangles should be, if we go from up, down, up, we should be dividing by 3 because that's undoing it. So let's look. If we go 3 divided by 3, do we get 1? Yep. 6 divided by 3 gives me 2. 9 divided by 3 gives me 3. So 72 divided by 3 should give me the number of pattern units. Press pause and solve 72 divided by 3. Alright, so from my work right here, we can see that that is 24. So there are 24 units. Um, and so how many beads are there? We start. We still have our 72. What do we do to that 72 to get the number of beads? We multiply that times 6. So finish solving out your problem. You should have come up with 432 beads. So look right here. What rule could you use to find an unknown number of beads if you know the related number of triangles? We just did that, so you should be able to answer this. I can multiply the number of triangles by 6. Your share and show is this entire page. Make sure that you read all of the directions and all of the steps and hints that they give you. Press pause while you work. So the rules that I'm writing have to do vertically, not horizontal. So the rule for the posts, I'm going to say, I have this number of sections, what do I do to get my number of posts? For my post, I am saying that I am taking the number of sections times 3, and that will give me the number of posts needed. For my rails, I could do it based on the number of sections or the number of posts. That's up to you. So for the rails, um, you could have done the number of sections times 6, or you could have done the number of posts times 2. Either way, you should get the same answers for 9 sections. So whichever rule that you use, you should have ended up with 27 for your number of posts and 54 for your number of rails. Number 2. What if another style of rail fencing had six rails um, for them? How many would you need for that? So we're looking at another table and finding the missing terms. Again, we're working up and down, finding the relationship that way. So it could have been that you multiply the section times 12 or you multiply the post times 4. Either way, you should have ended up with the number of posts being the same, 27, and the number of rails being 108. For number three, Leslie has buying a coat on layaway for $135, paying $15 each week. How much will she have left to pay after eight weeks? So this is a two-step problem. This is amount paid. It's increasing by 15. Um, so you need to find it from 1 to 15. That's times 15. 2 times 15. So our rule is times in by 15. So you would have found the amount that she's paid up to this point. 8 times 15, which is 120, and then subtracted that amount from the 135, which means that she still has $15 to pay. You may now go work on other tasks.